yeah thank you sorry recording i have enabled now fine so next thing h power density as i said average corresponding to the value over a particular period of time so when you are averaging that electric field over a particular time period so you can say an example of rms so finding the rms value of electric field you are averaging the electric field over a particular time period so when you are defining the average power density so i can define something like this it is a cross product of your rms value of electric field multiplied with rms value of the magnetic field so this is basically said to be the power density so this is the symbol actually i can use it for defining the average power density but there is no pronunciation of uh, what is this actual symbol all about basically when dealing with p p represents a power this is a special symbol which doesn't have any pronunciation at all but this represents the power density okay so the average power density i can define it as the rms value of cross product with rms values of the magnetic field now whatever the signal you have consider is somehow let us say electric field and magnetic field are sinusoidal in nature so what is the r value of sinusoidal signal so can you reply what is the rms value of the sinusoidal signal you would have been studied in your signals and systems the peak value divided by root 2 good so when it is rms value of electric field you can say the peak value of electric field divided by root 2 cross product with h divided by root 2 in other words say 1 by 2 times e cross h but actually if you see the standard textbooks they will take a conjugate on h or else you can take a conjugate on e value i will tell you the reason why they will put a conjugate here so the conjugate has been included in the equation to make the power density which is pure real number so let us take an example so you can understand it better so if you see for a uniform plane wave propagating in z direction so what is the electric field equation we have studied so you are have initial amplitude e not e power minus alpha z for j omega t minus z x cap by assuming electric field lies in x direction and similarly remember the magnetic field intensity equation i have given something like this h not e power minus alpha z e power j omega t minus beta z and assuming the direction of electric field y direction now what will happen so take direct cross product So if you take the direct product, your amplitude is also getting multiplied. Something like this: e not h not e power minus two alpha z. And what will happen? Phase term. So when you are straight away multiplying this one and this one, you are going to get something like e power two j into omega t minus beta z. But as I said, the power density is purely a real number. of course you need not to take the phase part because the magnitude of this sorry so whatever the magnitude you are getting something like this right if you are finding the magnitude this is equal to 1 anyhow but in the equation what is the reason why they have added the constant here was want to nullify the power density independent of phase suppose if you want to make the power density purely real then the conjugate has been added so that time what you are going to get e power z z comma t cross product with h of z comma t you are going to get e not h not e power minus 2 alpha z and your phase term get cancelled so that time this power density represents pure real number right so you got my point everyone the conjugate is including it for magnetic field just to cancel the phase because the power density is real 
So you have any questions to ask here? Conjugate has to be on either E or H. It doesn't matter. Either you can take a conjugate on electric field or for magnetic fields. Now, if you want to define your average power density or the pointing vector, okay, this average power density is also said to be your pointing vector. So till now we have got the equation something like this. 1 by 2 E cross H conjugate or 1 by 2 E conjugate cross product with H. But when you see your problems, they will not give both electric field and magnetic field. Only they will give the expression for electric field in a certain medium. And they are asking you to find out what is the power density vector. Can you tell me how to do? Suppose you know only the electric field intensity. How to find out the power pointing vector in that case? So anyone uh, switch on your microphone and you can speak. That will be better. If you know either electric field or only magnetic field, how to define the average power density? give intrinsic impedance yes exactly or on the correct right because the other term can be replaced by intrinsic impedance. because as i mentioned they will give the equation of either electric field or magnetic field medium you can easily estimate what is the impedance of that so you know right? electric field by the magnetic field is the impedance so you can replace the magnetic field with e by eta or suppose in other way the electric can be replaced by eta times h. So where eta represents the intrinsic impedance of your medium. So that's how you have to do. So let us take an example of uniform plane wave only and we will try to arrive the equation for that. So once again write down what is the electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity. So we have e power minus alpha z e power j omega t minus z a x cap and your magnetic field will be h naught minus alpha z e power j omega t minus beta z a y cap so in this case the average power density can be written as so can you answer what will be the direction of this power density everybody so subjected to this uniform plane wave propagating in z direction what is the direction of power density Z. Very good. So the direction of power density is same as the direction of power propagation. So because you can see here the power density is a cross product of E and H, which also represents the direction of propagation. So first of all, when I am writing the direction of power density, it will be same as your propagation direction. And when you see the magnitude, so what you are going to get E naught H naught by 2 E power minus 2 alpha Z. And here you can see there is one interesting thing here. So when you see the electric field, the electric field decays at a rate of alpha. And whereas if you see the power density, the power density decays at a rate of 2 alpha. So what is the meaning of that? So consider this is your z direction. And first when you are talking about electric, the decay constant is nothing but one time alpha. So your electric field decays at a rate of alpha. So this electric field decays at a rate of alpha right and what will happen to the power density the power density decays very faster it is double that of electric field so your power density will immediately become zero before your electric field itself so because the decay constant is nothing but two times of alpha so this one represents your power density so because it is a multiplication of electric field and magnetic field so the power will become immediately to zero level before your electric field reaches to zero level in a lossy medium. So you got the point? 
anything needs to be explained here so i request everybody if you understood you can say yes Okay, then let us try to replace the same power density in terms of purely electric field. So when you are talking about electric field, you know that the magnetic field intensity H naught can be replaced by E naught by eta. So if you replace that, what you are going to get E naught square by two eta e power minus two alpha z into a z cap. So this is average power density in terms of your electric field. And in terms of your magnetic field, what you have to do? So you know that the electric field intensity can also be replaced by eta times H naught. So if you do that, what you are going to get? 1 by 2 eta H naught square minus 2 alpha Z into eta watts meter square. So if you know the electric field intensity, straight away you can use this relation. And if you know the magnetic field intensity, use the second one. Okay, I will give an example. So suppose I given this is my electric field intensity. Something like this in a certain medium. Subjected to this electric field intensity. Can you tell me what is the average power density? How to write the average power density? First of all, can you tell me what is the average power density with respect to this particular electric field? What is the direction of power density subject to this electric field? So whatever I have in here, you have to remember, this is by assuming that the wave propagates in Z direction. But it need not be always in Z direction when you go to the problems. Correct. Now, you see this equation. And tell me what is the direction of power density subjected to this one? You can reflect quickly here. What is that power density? Is it positive y or negative y? You can see the equation clearly here. What is the direction of power density here? Good. Because there is a plus here, which means that the wave is propagating in the negative y. So the direction of power density will be negative y. Good. And since this is your electric field, as I mentioned, this is your magnitude. E naught by. So by comparing, you can say initial amplitude is nothing but. And of course, if you know the medium characteristics, you can define your eta. So that you can do in the problem. But this equation presents a lossy medium or a loss medium have a look on this equation and say whether the wave is propagating in a lossy medium or a lossless medium very good lossless why because you can see here the magnitude is simply a number which is not a function of any propagation direction so whenever the magnitude is constant you can assume that there are no losses so how to write this term then e power minus 2 alpha will be 0 and wherever z is there you replace with minus y. So the propagation here you are assuming that it will be z direction but in this case it will be negative y. But anyhow this e power 0 will be 1 in this case. So have you understood how to write when any problem is given? Have you understood how to write the power density if you see the equation of that, either electric field or magnetic field? Straight away, you take the uniform plane wave as a reference. Whatever the question they will give, you just always compare with the uniform plane wave propagating that direction. So, is there anything you want me to explain here? Okay, I will give an, another example. Uh, you do that. So you can take the first example. You 
can take down this example and tell me what is the average power density subjected to that. First of all, everybody tell me what is the direction? What is the direction of power density? Good, positive Z. And what is the magnitude of the power density? And because this is magnetic field, what is the mag uh, magnitude? You know, I have already given 1 by 2 eta times H naught square. Is your magnitude because the magnetic field intensity is given. So, by you can say H naught is equal to same as your 0 0.1. And at the same time, is it a medium or a lossless medium? Lossless, good. Because when you see the amplitude part, amplitude part is just a constant. So when you have a constant, it is simply, so what you can say simply, it's a lossless medium. So if you want to write, that will be e power minus two, alpha will be zero. So in, so here also the wave is propagating in positive. Way. So this is same as one by two eta h naught square into a z cap. So this only they are called as a pointing wave. So sometimes in the question, they may frame it something like this. Find the average power density or find the pointing vector. So the pointing vector is also said to be the average power density. So the terminology is same. Okay. If you understood, then we can go to the problems. We'll continue with the problems. So I think this problem has been solved. Okay, start with this one. So all of you read the question. So there is a transmitter in free space radiates a mean power of P watts in all the directions. So at a distance D sufficiently far from the source, the electric field intensity will be related to. So in terms of power and the distance, how the electric field intensity is going to vary. So the question is, let us say this is your transmitter in free space, which radiates the power in all the directions. So this transmitter radiates in all the directions, something like this. So at a distance D, suppose this is your transmitter and after traveling a distance D, what will be the electric field intensity at this point? Assume that this transmitter radiates a total power of capital P watts. So can you try and tell me the answer? If you are not able to do, I can give an explanation. Let's just give a try. Just give a try and share your answers. Then find the velocity in a last medium with epsilon r equal to 4.5 and mu equal to 2. So this is straight away the formula based question. So if you remember, what is the phase velocity in a lossless medium? So the phase velocity, if you remember, I have given this equation. The velocity of light divided by root over epsilon r. So if you have doubt, you can refer the previous class. So straight away we have seen the phase velocity in a lossless medium will be given as velocity of light divided by root over mu r into epsilon r. So all the values are given. You can substitute and tell me the value. So 3 into 10 power 8 divided by root over mu r is 2 and epsilon r is 4.5. So when you simplify that, you are going to get 10 power 8 meter per second. Okay, is it clear? Shall I go ahead?
Yeah, next one. You see that? So for an electric field, I have given something like this, E naught sin omega t. So what is the phase difference between the conduction current and the displacement current? What is the phase difference between your conduction current and displacement current? So if you want to solve this question, you should have remembered the case of the capacitor that what we have discussed. So in case of a capacitor, the current flowing through that is an example of the displacement current. So remember what is an equations we have given for conduction current and displacement current. So at the start of the propagation, we have done an extensive discussion on this uh, conduction current and displacement current. So if you remember, I can say the conduction current can be defined as current density multiplied with the area. So the area can be anything. I'm not going to discuss about what kind of surface it is. And similarly, the displacement current can be written as the displacement current density multiplied by the area. So we already know the conduction current density using your Ohm's law in electromagnetic that can be written as sigma times into your area and the displacement current can be written as dou d by dou t. So if you see the continuity, we are going to get the displacement current is the rate of change of the flux density with respect to time. So multiply with area here. So straight away given the value of E is nothing but E naught sin omega t, right? So you can substitute. So if anybody done with okay, answer is 90 degrees. Good, very good. So A into sigma is a constant and your electric field, I can say E naught into sin omega t. And similarly, so A into epsilon is a constant. And everybody you have to be careful here. This case, when you are writing dou by dou t, you should not replace with j omega. Can you tell me the reason? Anyone? So in this case, I should not replace the dou by dou t with j omega. What will be the reason? Good sinusoidal signal. So dou by dou t can be replaced for j omega provided it's a pure exponential function. But in this case, I have given it's not an exponential. It is, it's the combination of exponential you can say. So whatever I have given the signal in a so straight away you can take the differentiation because you know the electric field intensity, you take the differentiation. So what you are going to get, E naught is a constant and when you are differentiating that, you are going to get omega into cos omega t. Okay, now we can say A epsilon E naught omega. Cos omega t can also be written as sine of omega t plus 90. So that's it. So if you see the question, the phase difference between conduction current and displacement current. So forget about the magnitude part. Look at the phase here. So here there is a phase angle of omega t and here there is a phase angle of omega t plus 90. Both are sine. So what will be the phase difference now? So here omega t and omega t plus 90. So the phase difference will be 90 degrees. So option C is correct. So anything, any questions you have? So you understood? Okay, we'll go to the next one then. So if at any point, if I'm going fast or if I'm not able to catch, you can just reply me here. I'm able to see your uh, chart, all these things. So you can stop me at any point if you're not able to catch the, catch the things. Okay, see the next problem. So the electric field of a plane wave propagating through a lossless medium. So that lossless medium is characterized by your mu r is equal to 1 and epsilon r equal to 81. 
So in that medium, he has given the electric field intensity. So some equation has been given. Then the phase constant beta will be. So what will be the phase constant? Yeah, you can give it a try. And if you are done with that, you can share your answers. And anyhow, I am going to explain it afterwards. Well, okay, and tell me the value. Yeah, I'm sorry. So this equation, I think you have been uh, gone through the in the previous uh, class. So in a lossless medium, and I have given the equation for the phase constant, right? So the value of this one can be taken as the reciprocal of the phase velocity. So the beta can be written as omega by c into root over mu r into plan r. So all the values are given. You can substitute the values. So omega by comparison, it is to direct and velocity of light will be 3 into 10 power 8 and by comparison, mu r is equal to 1 and epsilon r equal to 81. So when you do the calculation, you are going to get 18 pi radians per meter. So this is your answer. We'll go to the next question. So the electric field of a uniform plane wave propagating in the dielectric medium is given by. So this is an equation he has given for the electric field intensity. Then find what is the dielectric. So assume since he is not mentioned whether it is an ideal dielectric or something, you can consider it dielectric uh, good dielectric medium okay. or otherwise you can consider it as an ideal dielectric not a problem so you can consider this case as a ideal dielectric medium and you can go ahead so you can do it and uh, tell me the answer So in the question, he is asking about the dielectric constant, which is nothing but your epsilon r value. So as I mentioned, if nothing is given, you can assume it as an ideal dielectric. So for ideal dielectric, what is the characteristics? Sigma will be zero and mu r equal to one and your epsilon r, you are having a finite value. So this can be done, answer is 3, let me verify. So the phase velocity, basically you know that in a lossless dielectric medium, it is a ratio of omega by beta. So since I mentioned it as an ideal dielectric, we have seen in ideal dielectric, the velocity is c by root epsilon r. So if we equate these two, what you are going to get? So by comparing your will be 10 power 8 and beta will be 1 by root 3. So you see the coefficient of z that will be 1 by root 3 is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 by root epsilon. So 10 power 8 get yeah. so you are going to get root epsilon r is equal to root 3. Correct. So epsilon r is equal to 3.
So all these things and all, as I said in the earlier discussion only, all the questions has been revolving around that uh, four equations only. Your phase velocity, attenuation constant, phase constant and impedance. So if you are thoroughly understood all those concepts, you can get any one of that formula or you can mix up two, three formulas so that you will be able to understand, uh, you will be able to solve the problem quickly. Okay. So we'll go to the next one then. So if the magnetic field intensity is given something like this, this is for a plane wave propagating in free space. Then the time average pointing vector will be. So the magnetic field intensity has been given. You have been asked to find out what is the power density or the pointing vector. So everybody reply, what is the direction of power density here? Good. Is it a lossless medium or a lossy medium? Lossless medium, again you can see here the magnitude is a constant. So when it is a lossy medium, or oh sorry, lossless medium, you need not to worry about that e power 2 alpha z. So that is not required. So only what is the magnitude? Because we have seen in our formulas, the magnitude is 1 by eta times h naught square. So this is your average power density. So all the values are you know. So since the medium is a free space, so in free space, the impedance will be 120 pi. And by comparing the initial magnetic field is 0.1. So you can say 0.1 whole square into minus a by cap. So simplify and tell me the value. One point eight eight. Let me verify. Sixty pi into ten power minus two into minus a by cap. Okay, minus point minus pi cap watts per meter square this is your average pointing vector yeah you can substitute the values 3.14 you are going to get 1.88 correct okay do you have any question in solving that uh, power density kind of problems now because this is a very important topic for the gate. Always, uh, the, most of the times they have been asked the problems on the power density. So you understood how to define the power density if you know either electric field or magnetic field. So is the concept clear for everyone? So this is also related to the power density you can try to solve. So in free space, the electric field intensity equation is given. Then find the average power crossing through a circular area of radius 4 meters in the plane x is equal to constant. So you know the equation for electric field intensity in free space. So he is asking to find out how much power will pass through a circular area of radius 4 meters that has been located at x is equal to constant. So the circle is located at a plane where x is will be constant. So there is a, to find out the average power, if you know the power density, the multiple power density with the area will automatically get the average power. Because we already defined the power density is defined as the power per area. So how to define the average power now? The average power density dot product with your area vector. So first define what is the average power density. So tell me the direction. 
first define what is the average power density just reply the direction here look at the equation what is the direction positive x and again the same thing is it a lossy or a lossless medium yeah lossless medium so you need not worry about that exponential term and this time since it is an electric field so the magnitude will be could have been e naught square by 2 eta that product with so can you tell me what is the area of this one so the area is nothing but for the I choose then is a circle so if you are calculating what is the see the power is flowing in this direction and he has kept a circular area in this fashion and since the surface is a circle we already know the surface area will be pi r square so the circular area will be pi r square and what will be the direction of this surface so reply everybody what is the direction of this surface represent so the circle is located at x equal to constant so what is the direction of that circular area good you should not forget this since from the first class i was shouting on this so when anything is constant that represents the direction of surface only so when i say x is a constant your y and z will be very so if you want to find out the direction of surface that represents the direction which is a constant so in this case x value will be constant so the direction will be x cap correct so all the values are given suppose in the same example if the circular area is located at z equal to constant what will be the answer the full statement is correct z equal to constant is my good the answer will be zero because that time your ax will be your power density and az will will be az will be your direction so dot product will become zero so how that scenario looks like your power is flowing in the x direction and you have a surface in the z direction so now where your power will flow through this surface because you can have a finite amount of the power provided your power density and the surface what you have chosen should have the same direction so then only you will be able to capture a finite amount of power okay forget about that now related to x is equal to constant you can simply solve this one and tell me the answer and option b 240 watts let me verify so e not will be nothing but 60 so 60 into 60 by 2 into so impedance of free space will be 20 pi because i have mentioned it as a free space yeah into pi square so r is nothing but so what is the r i have given 4 meters so 4 into 4 So you can simplify the value. So we are going to get two forty. Can verify that two forty watts. And one more thing you have to notice, everybody here, since he is asking about the average power, the power density also you have to take average. suppose in this case if this fellow says it's an instantaneous power you should consider it as an instantaneous power density so when you are taking an instantaneous power density you should not take that 1 by 2 term it is simply the cross product of e and h that time what you are going to get you are going to get e square by eta so if it is an average power density you have to take 1 by 2 term i hope the point is clear Yeah. So let us go to the next one then. See the next problem. So which one of the following statements is not correct for a uniform plane wave with the magnetic field intensity given like this? So out of all these four options, which one is wrong? 
So take time and read all the four options and tell me which one is the wrong option, wrong statement. Just give it a try. The wave frequency is 10 power 6 RPS, radians per second. So it is an angular frequency. Straight away you can see the value of omega, whatever I have given is 10 power 6. Because the unit's RPS represents for omega. So by comparing you can say the omega value is 10 power 6. All are correct. Okay, let's try. So omega is 10 power 6. So option A is correct. And next, to find out wavelength. So what you have to do? The wavelength can be found out from the phase constant. So by comparing, what is the phase constant beta you have? Beta is equal to 2. So this is of the form omega t minus beta x. So by comparing, beta will be 2. That is same as your 2 pi by lambda. So what is the value of lambda you are getting now? So lambda you are going to get 3.14 meters. Correct. So lambda is same as your pi. So which is nothing but 3.14. Option B is also correct. And as you see here, there is a negative sign here, which means the wave propagates in the positive x direction. So all three are correct. So definitely one option has to be wrong. So option D is going to be the wrong. But you are not sure about the answer. So even in your main exam also, the same technique you are going to do, right? If you are not sure about a particular option, try to eliminate the remaining options. So in this case, all the three uh, conditions has been ruled out because all are correct. So ultimately one option has to go wrong because I mentioned one of the following statement is not correct. I already defined one is not correct. So and hence your option D is wrong. So but here you have to understand what do you mean by polarized, right? So when you are talking about polarized, the polarization is a pure property of your electric field. So the polarization in other words is said to be the direction of electric field. So whatever the direction in which your electric field is located. So that represents the polarization. And of course there are different type of polarizations are there. Next we will discuss about that. So as of now you can remember the polarization is simply the direction of electric field. So if you see the example, you know that the propagation direction is equal to E cross H. So you can see the propagation will be in the X direction, positive X cap. And the magnetic field has been given in the Z direction. So what will be the value of your electric field then? Can you reply? Why? So positive or negative Y? Good. It should be in the positive one. So in this case, if I want to say the condition, the wave has to be polarized in the y direction. Yeah, do you have any questions? Okay, then one thing we will do because there is again uh, some network issue is coming occurring frequently. So I will try to close the session and one, once again I will log in. Then we'll start with the polarization, okay? Just I was closing the session and I will be back in a minute.